Moment number 14. On April 8, 1963, Cincinnati native Pete Rose made his major league debut on opening day. Rose would go on to hit 273 with 25 doubles and nine triples his rookie season and collect 17 of 20 votes to become the second player in Reds history to win the National League Rookie of the Year award. Moment number 13. Over his 24-year career, Pete rattled off 15 seasons with a batting average over 300. In 1968, he claimed his first batting title after posting a 335 average. Pete wasted no time collecting another title, batting a career best 348 in 1969 to become the NL batting champion in back-to-back -back seasons. Moment number 12. Pete earned the nickname Charlie Hustle because of his intense, relentless style of play. This was never more evident than in the 1970 All-Star Game when Rose barreled over catcher Ray Fawcett to score the winning run and give the National League a 5-4 victory in the 12th inning, a play that is considered the most memorable in All-Star history. Moment number 11. 1973 was perhaps Rose's most impressive individual season. Playing left field that year, Pete notched one of his 17 All-Star appearances, hit 338 to capture his third NL batting title, led the majors with a career and franchise best 230 hits, and won the NL MVP award while leading the Reds to the NLCS. Moment number 10. Rose incited a benches-clearing brawl in Game 3 of the NLCS at Shea Stadium when he slid into Mets shortstop Bud Harrelson while trying to break up a double play. Fans threw objects from the stands, and Sparky Anderson pulled his team from the field until order was restored. Despite the Reds losing that game, Rose would respond with a 12th inning game-winning home run in Game 4. Moment number nine. While the 1975 World Series is largely remembered for Carlton Fisk's walk-off home run in the 12th inning of Game 6, the Cincinnati Reds bounced back to beat the Red Sox in Game 7 and became world champions. Pete Rose was the MVP of that series, hitting 370 with 10 hits, 5 walks, 3 runs, and 2 RBI. Moment number eight. The Big Red Machine has long been considered one of the greatest teams ever assembled, with the most prosperous times in Reds history coming from 1970 to 1976. During that span, Rose captained the Reds as they collected five division titles, four pennants, and two World Series championships. Moment number seven. On May 5th, 1978, Rose became the 13th member of the 3,000 Hit Club when he singled off Steve Rogers of the Montreal Expos in front of his hometown fans at Riverfront Stadium. Since that time, 16 more players have reached this historic milestone. Moment number six. 
In the summer of 1978, Rose captured the attention of the baseball world when he strung together a 44-game hit streak, becoming the first player to approach Joe DiMaggio's record 56-game streak from 1941. Rose's 44 consecutive games with a hit trail only DiMaggio and Willie Keeler, who compiled a 45-game streak from 1896 to 1897 for the Baltimore Orioles. Moment number five. The true definition of a utility man, Pete did just about everything on the field, and he did it all well. Rose was the only player selected to the All-Star team at five different positions, second base, right field, left field, third base, and first base. Moment number four. As his career went on, the hitting records and milestones kept piling up for Pete, though not all of them occurred while wearing a Reds uniform. Rose became the NL career hit leader on August 10, 1981, as a member of the Philadelphia Phillies. He became the second member of the 4,000 Hit Club on April 13, 1984, while playing for the Montreal Expos. Moment number three. After signing with the Philadelphia Phillies following the 1978 season, Rose was traded back to the Reds from the Montreal Expos in 1984. He returned as a player manager, the last person to ever hold this position in Major League Baseball. Rose hit 259 with the Expos that season, but hit 365 with the Reds upon his return in 84. Moment number two. On September 8, 1985, Pete had two hits against the Chicago Cubs at Wrigley Field, the second of which was hit number 4,191, tying Ty Cobb's 57-year-old record. It would later be discovered that this was the day Rose technically broke Cobb's all-time hit record, as a two-hit game by Cobb in 1910 had been counted twice. Thus, Cobb ended his career with 4,189 hits. Moment number one. On September 11th, 1985, Rose reached a milestone no player had ever reached before or has ever reached since when he collected career hit number 4,192, surpassing the great Ty Cobb. Rose would end up with 4,256 career hits, but 4,192 still remains one of the most recognizable numbers in all of sports. <laughs> 